the questions. Hello, and thank you for joining us for Orange County Beekeepers Association uh, interviewing a beekeeper. Um, I'll go ahead and ask you question number one here. Tell us a bit about yourself, your name, your background, and what prompted you to become involved in beekeeping? Hi, Rick. Thanks so much for the opportunity, and I appreciate what you're doing for the club. My name is Trish McAleer, and I am a going on sixth year beekeeper. I'm the vice president of Orange County Beekeepers Association this year and uh, gone through the master beekeeper program. But a bit about me and my background, my grandfather was a beekeeper and I um, have a grandson that was involved with beekeeping and my daughter and son-in-law said, oh, you know, this is a perfect place for you to keep beekeeping bees. And I said, you know, I've always wanted to do that. It's been an itch I've wanted to scratch. So I what about beekeeping the wrong way? I ended up meeting some friends that said, oh, you know, beekeeper's got some colonies, he's moving, he's getting a divorce. And still I jumped in both feet first, not even realizing what I was getting involved in, hadn't been to a club meeting, didn't read a book and suffered the consequences. So uh, it was May, about May when I, when I actually was able to get a nuke and really truly start with beekeeping and, uh, continue to um, follow up with, I can't remember the second question here, what prompted me to get involved with BT. Um, uh, yeah, so. Uh, well, Trish, you began, mentioned, and, and you, might, uh, you might address this later in another question, but you mentioned um, a master beekeeper. Can you tell me a little bit about where that, what that was like or where that's from? Yes, UC Davis offers this program. They've got um, your, your a whole series before you can become a master beekeeper and we were lucky enough a group of us that we discovered that they had a grant from the ag department in san diego county so we had gone to that uh the, their website up in northern california and applied for that program down in san diego it was really wonderful doing it that way because we didn't have to fly up to, to davis and stay in a hotel etc cetera, etc cetera. you know all that additional cost we would have had and it was just really a wonderful program, learning from a scientific based um, uh, through the through the university, uh, all about bee husbandry and um, recognizing a variety of different pests and and control methods that we could use. Very cool, uh, and uh, thanks for sharing too. It's kind of nice to to hear about kind of a family tradition being carried on. Yeah, uh, I was never allowed to go over to my grandfather's bees. I was about three years old and they kept me away from the orchard. I was not allowed to go there. <laughs> All right, so let's look at the next question. Um, what are your current um, primary sources of information about bees and, and beekeeping and equipment and how do you continue your learning? Well, I subscribe to American um, Bee Journal. That's one resource. I stay connected to California Master Beekeepers Program. I go to the state conferences. I go to any perhaps international conferences if they're within reason. And I like to read any kind of scientific information, true factual scientific information rather than, you know, uh, something you might find on the internet that, that is some kind of um, anecdotal sort of a process for, for managing bees. I, I believe in using something that's proven. Sorry about that. Uh, do you, are there any particular sources that you've seen that have been consistently good for you um, regarding, you know, that scientific information? Uh, well, yes, UC Davis, our UC and our website, that is the primary um, driver here in the state of California. The products that we are able to use on our bees for baroque control and any other types of pesticides, testing methodology that's to be used and so on. Great, thanks for that. Um, what does your apiary look like? How many colonies do you have? What locations are they in? What climate are you at? Uh, all of that, what, what has your experience been uh, with your colonies? Well, I like to call my bees beach girls because I live in San Clemente and um, I am back up to a canyon and I fortunately am very, very fortunate where I'm located that my bees can fly out directly and they don't really bother anybody even though I am in a neighborhood. And I had to create a platform, of, it's about a 10 by 
five foot platform that I had to cut into the hillside. I dug, 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 and I finally got some individuals to come out to lay the, the patio pavers and then put a little mini pony retaining wall in for me. I try to keep maybe about five colonies, if, if that. I try not to have more, but occasionally with splits, when you have swarms, a variety of different things can happen and you need, and things expand and contract based upon you know, what's happening in your, in your colony. Right now I have um, one strong European colony. I made two splits off of that colony and I, I have a package from the club this year that everything is doing great. Uh, I just treated, I, I did a sugar shake yesterday and tried to film that for the club, but it was difficult with one hand. But I did a sugar shake. I found that I had 3.65%, so it was close to 4%. I had 11 mites, and I decided that I was going to treat. I used uh, formic acid with mitoway strips, which is um, my product, the product of choice that I wanted to use. It's below 80 degrees. It was below 80 degrees yesterday, so um, it was really a prime time for me. The remainder of the week is not going to be hot, so I'm I'm in with that. I was really um, quite surprised today to see, I had gone up to the apiary to check on things and I was quite surprised to see a few bees that were dead out in front, but that's to be expected. You open up the front end of the, the entrance, you remove your entrance reducer and you have ventilation within the colony so that they don't succumb to any kind of pest, pest or this particular pesticide, but you know, that's to be expected. I hope my queen is gonna be okay though. So. Of course, but I always want her to be okay. Um, yep. You mentioned that you mentioned that Pat, and just out of curiosity, um, do you have all of your hives set up right next to each other? Do you have a particular stand or a system that you created for that? Yeah, I have a hillside behind me, and I had to actually cut into the hillside to create a flat pad right in front of my colonies. It's a deep drop off. It's like a steep sliding board. So I cut that cut that off, and it faces right in, directly into a canyon. When I began with that pad, I uh, used some diatomaceous earth on the ground below that. I put a roll of that fabric cloth, vegetative fabric cloth to prevent weeds from coming up. And then I had my guys lay the patio uh, pavers down so that it would at least give, give me a leg up for a period of time before I had to worry about hive beetles trying to uh, become a problem in my eight period. First year was fine, but everybody eventually, the hive beetles smell the honey and they smell the colonies and they, they come. Very interesting. Thanks. I think about that preventatively, right? And, and yes. how to avoid issues from the yes. start. Yes. Um, so you mentioned doing a sugar shake uh, recently. Um, how, how frequently do you inspect the colonies and, and what does that process look like for you? Well, I go into my colonies about every two months. I compare going into a colony as if we were um, invaded by foreign foreign uh, aliens. If they were to take your roof off, <laughs> rearrange your furniture, you wouldn't be very happy about it. And and actually, when you go in and you disturb that queen, it takes her about a week to re recuperate, and the, all the workers in there to recuperate from what you're doing and messing around in there. So the least amount of inspection that you can do on your colony, or at least for myself, other people have different methodology, but I go in, I take a look to see if I can see eggs. If I can't see eggs on one frame, I'll go to the next frame. And if I see the queen, whoop, I'm good to go. But I typically look down inside my colony, pardon, I go first things first. I look at the front of my colony or the front of my hive box to see whether or not I've got any, any telltale signs of a problem. And if I don't see anything that's giving me some kind of a clue, then I go into my colonies. But I have a plan before I go in. I know what I'm going to do before I go in so that I'm just not in there clamoring around and just, just for the fun of going in and clamoring around and messing around with my bees. And I keep notes. I have uh, an app on my phone, so I'm able to record everything that I've done with each colony. So if I need to reference, we all think that you're going to be able to remember that, but we don't remember when we get back down, oh, what did I do? Was that colony one? Was it colony five? And I've numbered my colonies. I have a little number that I've stuck on the top of my hive boxes. But for the most part, you know, you go in, you take a look, you look down through the top. For myself, I look down through the top. The brood will be in the center. 
the brood is not on the outside, you know, occasionally it, you're wrong, you know, the brood, they, they do uh, lay egg, the queen will lay eggs outside of that center brood area. But you go in, you look for eggs, you look for larvae, if you see the queen, yep, you're good, you're good to go. And then you move on. There are other things that you would do depending upon the time of season, like, like now uh, we're getting close to um, where we would have honey flow coming in. And so you wanna make sure that the bees are not backfilling or that they're using that reserve space for the eggs, which is about the size of the basketball in the center of your brood, chain, your brood boxes. You wanna make sure that the bees are not backfilling. If, if so, then that means you, you need to give them some place to put that honey that they're running out of room, either out of a super, another super, that sort of thing. But I typically try to get in, get out, and not mess around uh, unless I see some kind of a problem or something, there's uh, feeders leaking out of the front, I know, oh my God, I've got to get in there and check that bottom board to see what's going on. So uh, for the most part, I have a plan when I go in, but then if I see any kind of a, uh, erratic problem, then I'll go further uh, with the colony. That's great. Thanks for that info. Um, and just out of curiosity, what uh, you mentioned keeping notes on your phone, what app do you use? Oh gosh, now I'm going to have to look that up. <laughs> I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. No problem. No, I can't remember the name of it. I, um, it's a, it's one of the free ones where, you know, I just, and, and for the most part, I go in and I put, uh, I put notes, you know, and I, and I refer to my hives as, H1, H2, H3, H4, and if, and then in the, in there, if I've made a split off of like H1, I'll say split off H1, and then I'll renumber, renumber it if I end up keeping that split, keeping or if I don't sell the nuke. That's awesome. Yeah, you mentioned uh, one of your last statements was, you know, everybody has a different perspective or everybody does it different, right? right? And so we come at this, like there's a lot of different ways to do it, but I think it's helpful for, for people to hear some of these different methods and, and approaches to take. I've heard people even just taking, uh, you know, in the notes app on their phone, uh, just making notes that way too. Yeah. yeah. Well, the big thing I think, you know, it's our responsibility to take care of this organism and that's what this is. And that's, that's the only should in beekeeping. You, you should take care of this organism. It's like feeding a dog or a cat or taking, if, you had, if your dog had fleas, what would you be doing with for the dog that had fleas? I mean, it's, it's about proper, proper um, husbandry to keep that colony alive instead of starving it or allowing it to get uh, mites to the point where it will abscound or it will just die on you. So, you know, then that's personal choice too. I mean, if somebody wants to spend a lot of money and buy a colony and build the colony and then ignore the treatment methods, then that's their choice because it's a big, it's a big waste of money if you are not taking care of that. It's like not feeding your dog, you know, after you've bought a purebred, so, so to speak. So anyhow, that's my opinion. Very good. Thank you. And then um, for the last question, um, for those, uh, I was going to say students, for those beekeepers that are new coming into this, um, what are your suggestions for them getting started? Do you have any specific advice or resources that you can recommend for those coming into uh, this hobby? Sure. Um, unfortunate thing right now is we missed out because of our normal class series that we offer our, our students or offer, not students, but offer our members uh, due to the COVID thing that the classes were all canceled. So it's unfortunate that this happened this year. But good beekeeping, good beekeeping classes are paramount. You can have hands-on, you can actually see what's going on, you can ask questions, there's questions and answers. Uh, the next thing is go to club meetings and meet up with other club members and get a mentor. You will find that there's a lot of people out there that are willing to have you come to their colonies or they may come to your colonies and they will help you out in that aspect. I recommend, you know, starting in January, if you're going to start beekeeping, get a hold of some really good books. Part of our Master Beekeeper program was the book that's entitled The Beekeeper's Handbook. It's the fourth edition. I'll hold it up. And um, it's one that they, requ they re request for uh, our class. And it's invaluable. There's an awful lot of really good publications, but I, I really, really like that book. 
then um, we have a fabulous resource here in California, UC Davis. They have resources online on their website. Rick, you're, you said you're going to be posting some information up for us, so that'll be great. And this is a publication that I just got my hands on. It has a tremendous amount of information in here for um, California specific because we have certain pesticides for treating varroa that are that are recommended only here in California that have been approved here in California. This is that document here. And um, you can go to uh, HTTP, the whole thing, anrcatalog.ucanr.edu. And I struggled to try to find this document um, in, in my search, but it was forwarded to me by Dr. Alana, so I felt fortunate that she passed that on. So uh, we will have that available for everybody here. And then another tool for varroa management, NEB Health Coalition. A lot of these resources we already have on our website, on the Orange County Beekeepers Association website. A lot of people may not realize or recognize that that's available there. So go to that resource. It's very valuable. Click on those those entries. Um, also, uh, with the Honey Bee Health Coalition, there are several videos online. There may be videos online with the UC Davis uh, site for uh, a variety of different processes that we do in beekeeping. So I highly recommend that. Get yourself a good mentor. There's a lot of us around that are willing to help and there's so much that you learn and you refresh yourself with becoming a mentor and helping a student. Being, a, being an instructor, while being an instructor, you're helping and you too are oftentimes learning because students will ask questions that make you think and make you do some personal research as well. That's great feedback. Thank you for those suggestions. Yeah, so I'm hearing mentorship and education just being a huge, a huge right, piece of right. Speaking. And going to our state conferences. We're going to have a state conference coming up in November. I hope it continues that we don't have a shutdown on that. But um, just maintaining connectivity. Sorry, I got my phone banging off. <laughs> maintaining connectivity with those uh, resources. We have. We have wonderful speakers that come to our state conferences and give us invaluable information. I love these young students that are working on varroa treatment and coming up with new methodologies. It, it just let, delights me to no end. That's great. Thanks for that info, Trish. Um, and, and thanks again for doing this interview for the Orange County Thank Beekeepers you. Association. Thanks. And, uh, thanks. We're so great to have you. Grateful to have okay. you. Your turn's next. <laughs>